Hello everyone. Today, I will tell you the story of mollusks. For those who appreciate good food, mollusks are known for being high-quality seafood. However, it can be said that their ability to look delicious is also a skill in itself. At least it signifies two things. First, they have the capacity to acquire sufficient nourishment, enabling them to accumulate the necessary nutrients and grow flavorful meat. Second, they possess the ability to protect themselves, allowing them to guard their valuable resources in a world full of dangers without being consumed. If they excel in both aspects, they can be considered winners in the animal kingdom. However, upon closer examination of mollusks' characteristics, we discover that they are not particularly exceptional, especially among snails and bivalves. They do not appear to possess the traits of a typical winner, which makes it difficult to comprehend. How did they achieve the evolutionary miracle with their seemingly ordinary bodies? This brings us to the renowned Cambrian explosion, which is often mentioned. If we compare species evolution to a game, the initial equipment given by the creator varies for each player. Some players, such as arthropods, are extremely fortunate, starting with excellent equipment. Others, like brachiopods, may have slightly inferior equipment but are still equipped enough to face the brutal competition. Now, let's discuss mollusks, who are unfortunately not as fortunate. In truth, we are not entirely certain about the appearance of mollusk ancestors. However, they were likely similar to creatures like the odontographus. These animals appear to be mere pieces of meat with no apparent future. Except for a small structure in their mouths called a radula, which contains numerous tiny teeth. It is important to note that odontographus or other early mollusks didn't possess a fully developed radula. It can be considered as a rudimentary form. For the sake of simplicity in our narrative, I will continue referring to it as the radula. The radula of Odontographus allowed it to scrape and consume organic matter, such as algae, from rocks on the seafloor. Apart from that, Odontographus had no other advantages. Faced with the emergence of various predators in the Cambrian oceans, the worm-like ancestors of mollusks were on the verge of extinction. However, it was at this point that mollusks truly demonstrated the concept of survival in adversity. Their ancestors initially strengthened their dorsal skin, making it rough and tough like a tire. They also secreted numerous small calcium spikes, resulting in an unappetizing texture. As a result, large predatory creatures showed no interest in these nutritionally poor and difficult to chew organisms. Small predators, on the other hand, couldn't handle their rough and tough skin. This strategy can be considered highly effective, and even today, a few mollusks, such as selenogasters, still employ it. However, it can be a bit awkward in terms of appearance. During the arms race with predators, some early mollusks took it a step further by secreting even more calcium on their dorsal side, gradually forming a spiky armored protection. This approach proved to be even more effective. And there are still mollusks today, like Acanthopleura, that use it. However, some mollusks felt that it wasn't sufficiently secure. Gradually, they fused the dorsal plates into a single solid piece, giving rise to the most significant invention in the evolutionary history of mollusks, the shell. From then on, whenever mollusks encountered predators, they simply had to lie on the seafloor, resembling an armored turtle. This significantly enhanced their defense capabilities. Hence, even today, many mollusks continue to utilize this strategy. Since embracing the evolutionary path of armored defense, mollusks were no longer susceptible to extinction. If you have watched my previous video on trilobites, you probably have a question. Both trilobites and mollusks followed the evolutionary path of armored defense, so why did trilobites become extinct? In the late Cambrian, the armor had already reached its evolutionary endpoint for trilobites. However, for mollusks, everything was just beginning. We previously discussed the immense diversity of echinoderms in terms of evolutionary changes. But mollusks are equally remarkable in this aspect. 
Throughout evolutionary history, there have been numerous bizarre-looking mollusks. For example, there are species like the Helsinoloida, which appears to have a pipe inserted into its shell. And the Devonian Acanthopleurus beyonsa with shells covering their entire backs. There is even the famous and peculiar Tully monstrum, which some scholars believe to be a mollusk. Unlike echinoderms with their rigid plates, mollusks have soft, fleshy bodies, resulting in fossil records consisting of scattered shell fragments. Considering the diversity of modern mollusks, I have every reason to believe that ancient mollusks also exhibited various extraordinary forms. It's just that they didn't leave behind sufficiently well-preserved fossil records. During the late Cambrian to Ordovician period, a large amount of calcareous algae grew on shallow reef rocks. These algae firmly attached themselves to the rocks and were exceptionally hard. They posed a challenge to various animals, as they were unable to consume or break through the calcareous algae. However, do you remember the starting equipment of mollusks? It was the unremarkable radula. Mollusks used this radula to gradually file through the solid defense of the calcareous algae. This meant that mollusks became the only animals able to enjoy this food source. The advantage now shifted to the side of mollusks, with no natural predators and an abundant food supply. Thus, the evolution of mollusks began with the evolution of tentacles, eyes, respiratory systems, nervous systems, and circulatory systems. With the evolution of new visceral organs, the size of mollusks expanded. The shells also grew taller, eventually becoming cone-shaped. There is a scientific viewpoint that suggests early mollusks rested on shallow reef rocks. As the waves in shallow seas were frequent, the cone-shaped shells were prone to tumbling under the impact of waves. This became an evolutionary challenge that mollusks had to face. Faced with this unprecedented evolutionary challenge, mollusks eventually devised four solutions, creating the four most successful branches in the evolutionary history of mollusks. Let's set aside the less prominent scaphopoda for now. The remaining three are the ones we are most familiar with. Gastropoda snails, Pelecipoda bivalves, and Cephalopoda previously mentioned as tentacled monsters in the previous video. Among these, Gastropoda is the most fascinating in terms of adaptation. It requires a bit of spatial imagination. Some researchers speculate that they adopted the following evolutionary strategy. They initially bent the shell forward making it heavier in the front and lighter in the back. However, this created an unstable center of gravity. To solve this, gastropoda twisted their entire body structure by 180 degrees, reversing the shell and shifting the center of gravity towards the back. During this process, the symmetrical body structure was disrupted. As a result, the originally symmetrical dorsal shell transformed into the iconic spiral shape we know today. The solution employed by gastropoda was rough but effective. Despite a complete change in body structure, they refused to give up their original defensive mechanism. According to the general course of evolution, such as the case of trilobites, it is inevitable that evolutionary potential will be exhausted, leading to eventual decline. In the real history of animal evolution, most animals ultimately fail to maintain their initial ecological niche. However, gastropoda achieved this feat. The secret lies in their starting equipment, the radula. Since the Ordovician, not only did algae, including calcareous algae, thrive abundantly, but various organisms capable of building calcareous shells also appeared on reef rocks. These organisms could withstand a significant amount of damage. But they were defenseless against the continuous output of the radula. Through a prolonged battle of offense and defense, the attachments on reef rocks became increasingly robust. In response, the radula of gastropoda became even stronger. Unintentionally, this created highly stringent entry conditions. Even today, very few other animals can compete for the ecological niche of feeding on these reef rock attachments. 
Moreover, these algae and other organisms attached to the reef rock often represent the fastest recovering biological communities after each major extinction event. Consequently, gastropoda, monopolizing this food resource, enjoyed the benefits. They became one of the wealthiest creatures in the animal kingdom, providing a solid foundation for their further evolution. Gastropoda then embarked on various evolutionary attempts. Starting from the Silurian period, some gastropoda migrated to freshwater habitats. This is why we have freshwater snails today. Their shells happened to prevent water evaporation, and their built-in lung chambers facilitated direct air breathing with minimal modifications. The versatile radula also allowed them to easily feed on land-based plants, fungi, and decaying branches and leaves. With everything falling into place, venturing onto land was not a challenging task. That's why we can enjoy dishes like French-style escargots today. Additionally, some gastropoda grew tired of algae and sought meatier options. For instance, the murex and natica upgraded their radula into can openers. They would latch onto bivalves and drill holes through their shells to indulge in a hearty feast. The geography cone transformed their radula into a venomous harpoon, instantly killing passing small fish. The entire ocean became their buffet. Some gastropoda, however, preferred not to actively prey on others. The balsas moved into the bodies of sea stars or sea urchins, choosing when to feed at their convenience. There were also gastropoda who didn't want to crawl around on the seafloor. The teropoda evolved a pair of small wings to freely soar through the sea. Moreover, there are many other unexpected gastropoda, such as the floating janthina, the reclining vermitas, the luminescent hinea brasiliana, and those with large shells or half shells, resembling bivalves or brachiopods. Even more astonishingly, some gastropoda abandoned shells altogether. Some gastropoda even snatched chloroplasts from algae and engaged in photosynthesis, playing their part in the process. To be honest, if I were to time travel to the future and see a snail flying in the sky, I don't think I would be too shocked. Some of you may think that gastropoda's success is solely based on their stable ecological niche and food source. However, it's not just that. In fact, modern mollusks are the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom second only to the omnipresent arthropods. They occupy ecological resources and rank third. In the face of unbeatable arthropods and vertebrates, how could they have achieved such a position without any abilities? In reality, there are two other classes of mollusks that resolutely gave up their seaweed-eating habits and ventured towards the unknown vastness of the ecological niche, creating new glories. We will share their stories in the next video.